between June and October 1936, snow traversed hundreds of kilometers of inhospitable territory to reach the Chinese Red Army base in China's northwest. By then, the former journalism student at the University of Missouri had already spent eight years in China. On this five-month sojourn. He listened, observed, and reported on the communist revolutionaries' own stories in their own words. More than 100,000 copies of the resulting book, Red Star of China, sold in England alone in the first few weeks of its coming out. It was instantly regarded as a classic, and remained so. In fact, the celebrated China scholar John K. Fairbank said of it. This book has stood the test of time on both these counts, as a historical record and as an indication of a trend. That trend has since captured the fascination of the West. But in the shadow of McCarthyism, Snow went into exile in 1959 in Switzerland, where he lived for the rest of his life. Snow remained a U.S. citizen throughout, and did return to the U.S. on rare occasions. Including in October 1965, when he was in Dublin, New Hampshire, for the Dublin Peace Conference, it was organized by Granville Clark, an influential lawyer who was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize four times. There, Snow met Dr. Diamond, Clark's son-in-law, and introduced him to China by writing to Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai to arrange for him and his wife Mary to visit the country for the first time in September 1971. That was about six months before President Richard Nixon's historic visit to China in 1972. So Clark had the World Peace Conference in 1965 at his home in Dublin, New Hampshire, and Edgar Snow and and Dr. Diamond shared adjoining rooms with a bathroom together. And Dr. Diamond said, "That's a very special kind of friendship when you share a bathroom." Diamond died aged 94 in 2013, after making about 40 trips to China, enabling two-way exchanges from academia to the arts, from culture to commerce. Somewhere among those trips, he visited the caves on the Yellow Earth Plateau in Bao'an in Shanxi Province. There, Snow sat down for days in 1936 with the young Mao Zedong, who was virtually unknown in the West, before leaving to write the world's first detailed portrait of a man who later became the founding chairman of the People's Republic of China. In late 1971, Snow was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and when he died several months later on February 15, 1972, President Richard Nixon and his entourage were on their way to China. To begin, what Nixon would later call the week that changed the world. The news that Chairman Mao Zedong would be happy to talk with Nixon, either as a tourist or as president, first appeared in an article Snow wrote for Life magazine, published on April the thirtieth, nineteen seventy-one. Snow last visited China between August nineteen seventy and February nineteen seventy-one, and he was invited to climb atop the Tiananmen Rostrum to watch. Side by side with Mao, the parade on October the first, China's National Day. In 1974, two years after Snow died, the Diamonds founded the Edgar Snow Memorial Foundation in Kansas City, Missouri, Snow's hometown. Dr. Diamond and his wife Mary Clark Diamond、uh, founded the Edgar Snow Memorial Foundation, and they did that right after Edgar Snow、um, tragically died, much too young, in 1972, and they wanted to be sure. That、uh, his memory was preserved and that his work continued.、Uh, so they gathered his papers. They created the Edgar Snow Reading Room、uh, at the University of Missouri Kansas City. They、uh, gave an honorary doctorate to Edgar Snow's wife on Snow's behalf,、um, and they just continued his work of U.S.-China friendship on that people-to-people level. Uh, so they conducted the Edgar Snow Symposium every other year, bringing scholars and civic leaders and、uh, doctors and all people from all walks of life together every other year, and meeting in both countries to just share ideas and and exchange friendship. Doctor Diamond 对这个中美人文交流最大的贡献，就是他和他太太呃一起做了这个。呃、uh, ，Edgar Snow Memorial Foundation。然后呢，他后任的几个有好多都是医生
就是因为在美国，律师啊、医生啊，这些都是社会地位很高的，通过他们的力量来影响。就是这个社会对中国的了解。Perhaps the most apt footnote to our Snow Diamond story can be found in the note Snow wrote: "Someone please scatter some of my ashes over the city of Peking and say that I love China. I should like part of me to stay there after death, as it always did during life." That wish was fulfilled October nineteenth. 1973, as Wheeler arrived on the campus of Peking University for the burial of half of Snow's ashes in a ceremony attended by Premier Zhou Enlai, it was on that campus that Snow had taught journalism in the 1930s. Snow's note also said, "America fostered and nourished me. I should like part of the same residue scattered over the Hudson River to join other debris." Which touches our shores. One Diamond's personal assistant Nancy Hale was asked what Snow's most important message to Diamond was. She said, "I think it was go to China. This is a beautiful, ancient, proud civilization. You can't study it it from a book. You need to you need to experience it, and that once you do." You'll understand a lot more about the whole world because it's a huge part of the whole world.